Ladies and gentlemen, we are coming to the last band there. So I'll start with uh, uh, Dr. Sarah, but today we're going to do it a bit different. Uh, this Patriotic League of Uganda, I would like to hear a comment from each of you, uh, especially being that the Honorable Minister was at the flagship of this. He should be arrested. Honorable Sumjo, I'm coming to you. If you went, <laughs> to, <laughs> if you went let me to, start with the, to participate in the breaking of the law, he let, should let me be start arrested. With Dr. Sarah, your comment on this Patriotic League <laughs> of Uganda. <laughs> well, uh, for me, the first unfortunate thing is the <clears throat> abuse of the Constitution. You have a serving soldier, politicking, together with the people who should be stopping him, like cabinet ministers. You have uh, members of parliament, several of them attending, the, especially from NRM. I think there were only two from opposition. Uh, you know, attending a launch of an illegal entity. You say it's a pressure group. It doesn't matter. It, it is registered. Registered, headed by, by a serving military general, who is always politicking, of course, on a campaign trail under the watch of his father. For, for me, it's not only abuse of, of the constitution, but the vulgarization of UPDF and the people's uniform. When UPDF came uh, and the Tarehe star that, that we celebrate, it was in the spirit of never again shall we as a country have a politicized army. But the politicization of UPDF, a very competent army with highly educated officers that are dedicated to serving this country, but a few elements abusing that institution for political gain is very unfortunate. The second unfortunate bit is members of NRM party who went to attend the launch and they are criticizing their own party. We cannot do this. We cannot do that. So, uh, uh, and there were about 136 NRM MPs. I, I, and since the minister attended, I wasn't aware that he attended. So can he tell the country, have they lost hope in NRM? Have they lost or avenues of, of making things right in NRM that now they need a pressure group to go and start talking like activists who are powerless and fighting their own party. That is also unfortunate in terms of, of building democracy in this country. Okay. Honorable Paul Omala. Uh, thank you, Simu. Omala was one of those they lined up in Bukede to go and <laughs> have an opportunity to go to Mohoz. Really? Yes. Did they attend? Them? They were there like a school children. I was a major child. I was a major child. I would not allow me to say. <laughs> Please allow him to speak. <laughs> to have my say on this thing. <laughs> uh, Timothy, um, I just saw the launch of the PLU uh, on TV. Uh, I didn't attend. But from what I see is that PLU now is. Uh, as much as it is registered as uh, an NGO, it is indeed. It's an a, NGO. A, uh, it is a political vehicle <laughs> with a clear so purpose. So government <laughs> ministers are now in a non-governmental <laughs> entity. <laughs> <laughs> my my sense my sense is that it's a political vehicle uh, with the intention of uh, of achieving political power. And General uh, uh, Muhozi, who is the chairman, was I'm told he was elected in absentia, uh, who is the chair of the organization, I think has made it very clear that he intends to uh, run uh, for presidency at a particular point. Why don't you advise him um, to then? <laughs> can, can I have my say? <laughs> <laughs> so, 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 and it is an offshoot of NRM, which I think was a reaction uh, to the popularity that Honorable Bobby Wine um, uh, Chagulani had gained uh, after the 2021 election. As we have observed today, that the original uh, NRM leaders, uh, both in the military and in the political circles, have, have, have aged over time. So you have now 75% uh, <laughs> of the population are much younger people 
uh, below 35 years. So they are no longer, uh, you know, gravitating towards the, the elders. So you really needed to have um, a creation that would attract uh, these young people away from the uh, political, uh, how do I call it, tsunami which uh, Shagulani had come with. Uh, but also to take away, because there's a section of Uganda actually who believes that um, the action by General Muhozis offends the the Constitution but, uh, and, and the Uganda, UPDF Act. If you'll be speaking for yourself, don't you think so? so <laughs> <laughs> you'll have your say. What I would, my appeal actually to the President, that since the young general have actually expressed a desire to run for presidency, I think it would be prudent now to, to release him from the army so that he, 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 he takes away the baggage of um, him being viewed as taking actions which are unconstitutional and which offends the UPDF Act. But the impact on NRM political organization is something that would be, would, we should uh, watch closely because General Muhozi and the team who are there <coughs> don't believe in NRM. They believe NRM is corrupt. They believe these uh, NRM leaders are not serious. Also, as, as uh, so, so, but so as he's creating <laughs> this other organization, <laughs> The NRM leaders have moved into PLU. The pressure group. They have moved into the so pressure group. So the corrupt group. people are going into the pressure group. <laughs> so so, so, so what, what I can no longer tell is the fate of NRM because in the absence of President Museveni, I believe NRM will collapse. Okay. Because, because the general might start uh, uh, PLU, mm. might soon become the um, uh, patriotic party of Uganda and it becomes a new political party that he will head, and I think NRM leaders will go with him. Okay. So, so that's what I see. Okay. Honorable Samuju. You see, everything that uh, these NRM politicians are doing, they are doing it because they think he's going to please Mr. Seven. They're not doing it out of love for Mohoz. The other day I told them in the parliament, we are like M7 doesn't have children, younger ones. There will be men and women who are willing to go and babysit his children if that's what is going to please <laughs> the master. <clears throat> so these ones that you, you see going there, if M7 announces tomorrow that it is Natasha who will succeed him, you will see them now running after Natasha. There is a group that goes to pray with the, with the patients. With patients, who is a bishop. They had their own churches, but as soon as Museveni's daughter started churches. Now they went there. You see, the M7 family has made people extremely vulnerable. And uh, <clears throat> they express that vulnerability by doing crazy things. Because you can't be a serving minister in a government and then you go to attend the, the something that undermines it. You have said you are reactionary, you are corrupt, you are tired. And then ministers are there very happy. Crapping. Yes, because they, they know that Muse is happy with this. And uh, you, you meet them in Parliament crying. The other day I was sympathetic when I saw Muse Yomara here and uh, <laughs> hundreds of NRM MPs. Me, me I was a guest to the speaker. Lined up like a primary, <laughs> not even a second, but primary school children <laughs> to go and greet Mohoz in a line, eh? one by one, ah, they were there. <laughs> then I, I asked them at Parliament, yeah, you mean you guys, you, you've gone this far? You see, for me, I am 50, I am lucky. I don't think I have as many years as I have lived. So even if I fail Kampala because I came from a village, I will go and dig the remaining years. But there are things I cannot do that insult my conscience. This is what they are doing. People who are supposed to be guiding the country, that's why I said they need guidance. Ministers, members of parliament. And that's why you see, if, if you look at the quality, even the late Jacob Olanya spoke about it, the quality of MPs of the 60s, and the quality that we have today. Many of them, when you meet them, the, the people who have no direction, sense of direction, say, what do we do? Maybe now he's about to give the son. Oh, listen, <laughs> ah, they run there. <laughs> hey, but the man might not go. Can you imagine, that's, that's what we are involved in as a country. Because the MPs should be the ones speaking about himself and creating a dynasty in Uganda. 
feeling of self entitlement i am succeeding my father muhozi should be succeeding farms in in chiso za ndero akitura not uganda this uganda doesn't belong to mu seven but the mps who sh whose duty because the first thing we do every beginning of parliament is to pick the constitution to swear i will protect the constitution these ones who took an oath to protect the constitution they are escorting muhozi to go and break it the, why did you waste people's time that you pick a constitution i will protect this constitution and then you go and follow people who are breaking it and then you return to parliament sometimes you ask yourself do i stay home because how can i keep a company of these serious fellows okay <laughs> can, can I thank you very much <laughs> can i just say something before it goes to the minister you see they have, have and read you have seen Omara. He's uh, pleading. Please, Mr. Uh, Mseven. No, 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 no,
They want to join government in, in uh, training people in patriotism, fighting corruption, assuring service delivery and effectiveness, what we are talking about here. And I thought that was a group that should be supported. Two, I don't know why all this will be. You have had the Suvi over 2021. It comes. Uh, headed some, by, some, and some, headed some, by a serving military general. Headed by the same Jews. The serving <laughs> military general. You, you have had UID. Yes. Nobody is talking about it. No, Roy But the Patriotic League of Uganda is causing a lot of what? Because you are breaking the, the constitution. No, the, 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 serving, the, the serving general is organizing people to assist the government in fighting corruption. So what is wrong with that? He's a general special presidential advisor in charge of special, special duties, special okay. operations. As you conclude, Honorable So what, what is your problem about it? Are you fearing the general? <laughs> or you are fearing the league itself? We are fearing for the country. Why should Which the country? <laughs> Honorable, why should the general be feared? Yeah. The general should be protecting Ugandans yes. and the territorial integrity of okay. the and, and he's also not competing in politics. Gentlemen and ladies, saying, uh, we're, we're going to leave it at that. Duties, no, but you see, the minister, the minister said yes. for him is just yes. being invited. When they say you are talking about <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> it's, it's, it's an issue from, that, from us, from us here on, on the headlines. Head 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 thank you very much for watching. Even if you invite me as if <laughs> not at all eh? i am a minister of uganda i should meet every population that needs me so if for you don't need me <laughs> doesn't the red tape become another problem because he has to make a decision on whether fiber comes from national theater to ubc and it has to come from him to the director to the commissioner to the pes to the under secretary and by the time fiber that is supposed to just show african cup of nations is coming here you see, in Dubai, every year has a, a fa very huge function to celebrate achievements of public enterprises. They give them targets. They're supposed to compete with private companies. When they surpass those targets, there is always a function I've attended two of them. They reward them, but also the MDs of these parasitos uh, are moved from one parasite to another depending on their performance. I in Uganda here, the government itself has no target. The ministers have no target. And, and really, you must be sympathetic that you give NRM ministers targets, you will not sleep. They are not people that you can, you can give targets. They are just there. So if government has no target to deliver, and, and, and because I, I keep saying, and you, you'll excuse me, you be see here, if you had been transferred from the Ministry of National Guidance, you will be doing far, far much better. Many of you guys who are working here, we went to school together. Some of you are the best. But they bring you here. One time I was watching the news. You have Museveni first followed by his wife and then Prime Minister. What? Stories that have no news value, but because you work for a government entity. So they will tell you how the news must be structured. If they allowed you to go and compete with the private media, you will be, because we are the same people. I don't think you become stupid because you work at UBC. But the environment under which you work, the Minister for National Guidance will recall. This is the story we want of uh, Mama. Now today she was uh, doing this. Now Tata is doing this. So the, the red tape will remain. Because seven ministers cannot do anything. They first do calculation. Is the president happy with this? You will not have ministers making decisions because they never make them. But also the, 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 the environment, because you see, the parastatos attracted some of the best people in the market because of the way they were paying, but also because of some independence they enjoyed. Let me tell you, and I don't want anyone to be mistaken, I support rationalization because I want a cost cut, but I don't trust that uh, the, the service will be delivered better. Because most, the motivation now, by the way, by many of these ministers, they see the budgets in the parastatos. They're actually scavenging. They want the budgets to come back. They want to be the one to be making the decision for roads, for, 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 for every parastato. That is the motivation by the ministers. For the president, I don't know. Because if the same president who is duplicating, he, even his own government, ministries are being duplicated in the state house, every ministry. 
has an equivalent department in the state house, whether for health, whether for, for education, whether for everything. It cannot be the same president now saying, I want to rationalize because of duplication, because of uh, cutting costs. His motivation, I don't know. But many of these uh, national guidance, the motivation is to now get the budgets of, of parastatals and begin running them. They want to be the one to give cheats for a road. Because see the performance, performance of ministries. Ministers who can't distribute iron sheet, now you tell them to run parastatals. It's going to be chaos. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much, Honorable Samuju. Let me come to Honorable Mara. <laughs> Honorable Samuju paints a very gloom <laughs> and hopeless picture, Honorable Mara. But when you look at this idea of rationalization, he agrees with it. Yeah. The implementation is where the trick is. Is it feasible? Uh, thank you, Timothy. And it, it's quite interesting to speak after the Rabo Rosa, <laughs> Rosa Odabo Semujo. Um, I think, Timothy, the question we should ask is, uh, how did we get here? I think it's important for us to understand that. Given the fact that um, when uh, NRM government came to power in 1986, they pursued <coughs> a policy of privatization and liberalization. And the idea at the time was that the government should not be in the business of running companies and uh, you need to have a, a smaller government and to deal with policy issues um, rather than running companies. So that, um, those policies, although largely driven by World Bank and IMF at the time, helped government to do a lot of work many of the government parasitals and companies were sold and government became much smaller. But then something drastically happened. In the course of time, uh, we were in, in the main being funded by IMF and World Bank. And they came up with suggestions. You know, when they come, they look at government ministries. They say, no, but for this one to run well, we need an authority. Let's have the UNRWA uh, to help us run the, uh, do the road construction. Then they come, to, they come with their money and said, for this to, to, to happen very well, let's have this entity. So over time, the government started pursuing an expansionary institutional creation which has actually now caught up with us. So we <laughs> created this multiplicity of companies and parastatals that were running parallel to the main ministries. And we could tolerate that for a long time, basically because uh, we didn't have much crisis. The money was still flowing in. Uh, money was still uh, coming through. Now, if you look at the last uh, three years, we experienced a COVID situation. Uh, which basically impacted our economy. And then, uh, as a country, we decided, we said, you know what, our values are not for, are not for sale. Then we um, legislated, enacted the anti-homosexuality law. That, in effect, <laughs> made some people very unhappy. I would give you a, a key um, statistics. This financial year, 2023-2024, which is ending in June, the budget support which we have is 2.7 trillion shillings. 2.7 trillion shillings. In the budget framework uh, for 2024-2025, that amount has dropped from 2.7 trillion to 29 billion, almost by 98%. So the monies that we used to receive as a budget support has basically gone down. Uh, secondly, also, the loan, the, the, the national debt keeps growing. And if you look at the, the discretionary expenditure that we have, for this financial year, it's 25.5 trillion. Projected for 2024, 2025, it has fallen down to 21.7 trillion. So over three point something trillion has gone through the window. 
so when, if, if you are seated where President Museveni is, you now begin to say, said, okay, where is West? At where he, is clutter? It is at his residence. Where is duplication? And so when we came to this parliament in 2021, uh, May, after we were sworn in, the message of rationalization started. We actually found it on. And we thought it was going to be done quickly. We are now three years into the, the same conversation. In the financial year 2024-2025, uh, money has been allocated, 79 uh, billion, as severance pay for those that will be affected. So this is a, an economics. It's, now, it's no longer a political question. It is purely a budget and economic matter where you have a budget to meet, and the president was very clear when he made the presentation at, at Entebbe, he said, as NRM, what we are pursuing as the main pillars is basically industrialization of Uganda. The second is commercialization of agriculture. Third, ICT, and then the fourth, services. And these are centers for wealth creation, for generating wealth. Now, what we need to do as a government is to see how best can we provide support to these centers that are creating wealth. Because as a, for the economy to grow, we need to make sure that there is infrastructure. We need to invest in roads, invest in railways, make sure that we provide skills for the workforce that is required in the private sector. We need to connect the entities for them to function. But here it is a section, this 150 something you're talking about, you look at them and say, are they generating wealth or not? Or they are basically a consumptive uh, sector, you know, uh, agencies. So for him, his argument was, if you are creating money, it's okay. But if you are just duplicating and you're not creating money, then now, in, in a strategic sense, for us to move forward, is that we now need to rationalize these parasitals and agencies. It's something, by the way, like Honorable Samuja said, is something that we, I support. During the, the budget framework paper discussion, as budget committee, we were receiving um, the reports, the sectoral reports from the committee chairs. You will find, for example, like where he seated ICT. So you'll find that this MDA has a budget for, for ICT. These other agencies will come, they have a separate budget for ICT. This one, like that, what, we, the, what the chair of the budget committee, we agreed, we said, can the clerk of the budget committee, can you combine all these monies from these MDAs and put them under NITA U, under Ministry of ICT? Just to avoid, you could see duplications all over the place. Honorable Mara, yes. shouldn't we be looking at, uh, instead of piecemeal, Yes. Holistic rationalization. Yes. Honorable Samuji talked about it. Government, parliament, the executive. Yes. Because when I do the numbers of what Honorable Samuji is talking about, yes. if by 2026 we're at about 3.1 elective positions, yes. and assumption is where, let me put an assumption of about 42 million Ugandans. Mm. That means for every 14 Ugandans, each of them has one lead. I totally agree with um, that position. This matter, in fact, we, when we, we met the president and we were very open with the conversation, we had the conversation in Tebe, and all these issues were raised. We said we should not only rationalize MDAs, we should also look at <coughs> the size of cabinet. Do we need 81? Maybe we need less. We we also, looked, we, we also look, looked at... 86. Yes. Cabinet members are 81. Even the president doesn't know them. They're 81. He keeps calling them nani. He doesn't know the... Honorable <laughs> 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 we, we, we approved the number. The number is 81. So, so we're saying, we look at the, the size of cabinet. Let's look at parliament. Let's look at um, presidential advisors. They are 200 in numbers. Um, and then the matter which was also raised with the president is that the worries are that it is okay for us to rationalize. But the big problem we have is that there is inefficiency in government ministries, which uh, Honorable Samuji is raising. So if you have the ministries are clogged, they're inefficient, they're bureaucratic, they're corrupt, 
So how then do you now mainstream the agencies into those ministries? That was a big question that was put there. And the president indeed said, you know, this is not only going to talk with the agencies, we are going to look at the bureaucracy, the efficiency, because it's about efficiency and effectiveness in public administration. And, and for example, if you, uh, one of the things that the president pointed out, he said the, the, the highest public servant in a ministry should be the permanent secretary. But then you find behind, below the permanent secretary, you have this person called the director. And he actually said he didn't know how they were created, how they came to be. And so be, below directors, you have the commissioners. So if you pick agriculture, you have maybe commissioner for fisheries, commissioner for crop science, maybe commissioner for mechanization, commissioner for animals. Now, now this commissioner should indeed be reporting to a PS, but they have to report to a director. So in the proposal which is coming, then the position of the directors will go. So, so just to answer your question, there should be a holistic outlook in terms of how we are going to rationalize. It should not stop with the MDS. We need to look at the efficiency in, uh, in government ministries. And then one item which also came up, which is a money saver, is uh, corruption in government. The IGG puts the figure at, at 10 trillion shillings. Now, 10 trillion shillings is humongous. And uh, the, the proposal that the president is providing is that uh, with rationalization of uh, entities, agencies, and parasitators, we would save one trillion shillings. That's a lot of money. But corruption takes 10. So we now need to deal with three big items. The rationalization, which we are looking at now, of agencies. Then we need to bring in efficiencies in ministries themselves. How do we create efficiencies? in ministries, and the third, we deal with corruption. So when we deal with those three, then the future is bright. If we don't deal with inefficiencies in, in, in government, we might mainstream these agencies or get rid of them. What Honorable Semuchi is warning us about is that the system will get clogged, service delivery will be poor, and one of the issues that members of parliament raised with the president was, for example, yeah, uh, rare. RARE was min mainstreamed into the Ministry of Energy. But members of parliament who represent the electorates are saying, ever since RARE was mainstreamed, we don't feel it. Where there were poles put in place, we don't see anybody coming to connect those poles, the, the wires, uh, and connect electricity to our people. So if RARE is an, an indicator, then we must have to be worried. There should be a, a sense, it, and we need serious people, by the way, to run government. Uh, Honorable Minister of Finance, uh, Muzei Kasaija, was telling the president, he said, I have to run everywhere to look for money uh, to, to fund the government. But the corrupt people are eating it. And he told the president, President, uh, this one should not be within the, our government. They should not serve. So we must be able to confront the corrupt and tell them, please leave. We must have the courage to fire them and say, go away so that the little money we have, we can effectively use it to serve the people of Uganda. Thank you very much. Uh, Dr. Sarah, when you hear all these conversations, especially structural adjustment, and hear this rationalization, is government well-meaning in this rationalization idea that it's fronting? And when you look at it, what effects do you see? Well, in principle, rationalization of agencies is good and I'm sure every citizen out there supports the principle. But I think we need rationalization of government expenditure, not just agencies, because the executive seems to be excited going after the soft targets, the, the technical personnel. When you look at the size of government or the size of our public expenditure bill, Uganda has one of the highest size of cabinet in the world. I've not seen any country with a, a cabinet the size of 81 ministers. The second highest country with a number of ministers is uh, Pakistan. But Pakistan has a population of 225 million. So they have a cabinet of 76 ministers. 
among countries captured as countries with top cabinet, size of cabinet is Uganda, Pakistan, then you have North Korea with seven, 47 ministers, you have uh, India, 29 ministers, Indonesia, a population of 273 million, 38 ministers. India has a population of 1.3 billion. You have uh, China, a population of 1.4 billion, 26 ministers. And uh, so when you come to Uganda, a population of about 45 million, we have 81 ministers. We are seven members shy of uh, eight football teams. Meaning that the cabinet of Uganda, I know we have just come out of Afghan games. The cabinet of Uganda is seven members shy of playing quarterfinals alone. <laughs> team A versus Team B, Team B versus. So you have a cabinet whose size can go for the quarterfinals of Afghan games. On its own. Yes, 81. We are just missing seven to make 88. Those are eight football teams. So when you look at this size of cabinet, every minister, to be, the BESC has a pickup at home for domestic use, has a vehicle with a, a, a lead car. Those are three vehicles minimum. Some of them have more than two, three vehicles of escorts. So look at the size a minister is moving from home to office and back. How many people do they move with? So every time a minister is on the road, it's a mobile hospital. It's a cost of a mobile hospital. So we need to look at where is taxpayers' money going. The president, during uh, the NRM caucus meeting, spoke very well. He said that when you fail to answer strategic questions, then you create a strategic mess. Uh, and he said that when we talk of rationalization, I quote, we are talking about doing things that are rational and save money. He further went ahead to quote Adam Smith in a book of how do nations create wealth. Very fundamental issues. But what is the practice? Saving one trillion shillings by dealing with a soft target of technical officers. It is good for taxpayer. But how much more money are we losing as a country? We have 85 trillion stuck at the high court division in litigation. This is almost double. Double the, the, the annual budget of this country is stuck in the commercial division of high court because of challenges in the judiciary. When you come to tax exemptions, in the last financial year, we lost 2.8 trillion in tax exemptions. This is double, three times, the money we are seeking to save in rationalization of agencies. When you come to corruption, the Inspector General of Government has said we lose 10 trillion. This is 10 times the money we are seeking to save in rationalization of agencies. Parliament and Office of the President. Each of them spend, the Office of the President spends about 2.6 billion every day. Yeah. How many schools are these? These are five schools per day. Five seed schools. The President eats five seed schools every day. Parliament eats six seed schools every day. So for me, this is the analysis we need to put to this question of rationalization. How best can we save taxpayers' money? Uh, and the citizens need to look at parliament. Each time parliament is in session, we are losing six seed schools. What quality, what, what, the value of work they are doing, is it worth six seed schools in this country? Can we still do the same work at a less cost by cutting the size of parliament? We create the districts every other term. And shamelessly, even when we are borrowing to pay salaries as a country, shamelessly, parliament will create constituencies, will create districts. Government is borrowing to pay, to pay salaries. We are bankrupt. 
Our books of accounts do not balance. But we shall create additional administrative units. So Mr. President, going back to the preamble of, of your address, caucus, how do nations create wealth? The Constitution limited the size of cabinet to 26, 23 cabinet ministers and 23 ministers of state. That would give us a total of 46 ministers in cabinet. You are at 81. You are at eight football teams, Mr. President. What is the value of this eight football teams of cabinet to a taxpayer? Can you go back to the constitutional threshold? That should be the first action to indicate goodwill on the side of the president. From there, can we have cabinet reduce itself to two MPs per district, male and female? We will hit the, the sustainable development goal 15 on gender equality. We will hit the, uh, the requirements of the African Union Constitutive Act uh, and Agenda 2036 of, of the AU on gender parity. We shall also save money and we shall have equal representation of our population dynamics in parliament. Two MPs, male, female per district. Yeah, but uh, the districts themselves will need to be also uh, they need to be again. collapsed back. Yeah. Most of the new districts are unviable. They don't produce income. They don't, up, um, up six, above 60% of our GDP, between 6 and 70, we have an economy still will provide the accurate figures. Yeah. Of our GDPs go, go from Kampara, works yeah. and Mugono. Revenue. Yes, revenues. Yeah. So you have the bulk of these districts just consuming taxpayers' money with less or no production. What is important is service delivery to a taxpayer. We went under decentralization principle, under the slogan of taking services closer to the people. When you look at this, some of these agencies, like UNRWA, which work with the local governments, one would assume that they are building cap capacity for the local governments. So when you are taking back these agencies that build capacity, are you centralizing? Are you recentralizing? Has the decentralization principle failed? These are the questions of the day that should be answered. <coughs> so in my view, parliament should go for the big tax, uh, the, the biggest consumers of taxpayers' money in terms of public administration and cut every item by half. Then we can look at the technocrats who are in these agencies. Why are some of the agencies performing better than ministries? Because agencies work on contract with the performance indicators. What are the performance indicators of, of, of public servants? The traditional public servants have a mentality of putting a jacket behind the chair and going about your business without serving the entity that employs you. That's why agencies were created because of the laxity and the mentality of, of, of the public servants. Has this mentality changed? Can, can I provide some information yes, to you? Please. I was with uh, uh, a commissioner in one of the ministries um, uh, 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 yesterday, and he told me that um, you see, me, I earn uh, 2.7 million shillings at my level as a commissioner. Hey, and I said, but those ones who are in the parastatals, they're earning 20, 30, 40 million. So is this a possible? So, so, so now he's saying, he's, saying, <laughs> he's saying that cannot feed me, cannot feed my children, cannot feed anything. So I am forced to go outside to look for. So he's forced to, to hang the jacket? <laughs> oh, he's forced to hang the jacket and go and look for something. So, w which, which means we have to look at uh, the salary structures as well uh, for some of these uh, uh, people who are going to be mainstreamed or even the current existing public servants. M money pay is an issue. True. That, that, that's, if we had the contract with the performance indicators in public service, at least from the senior level, 
going upwards to the, the permanent secretary is on contract. But yeah. I know parliament has censured some permanent secretaries and they are brought back through the technical arm. <laughs> Incompetence is not withstanding. So these are the issues we must focus on as a country. Uh, uh, doctor, let's talk about the legalities. Some are by the constitution. Others are by acts of parliament. Others are by company acts or whatever legal regiment is there. How is this going to happen, especially looking at about 2,170 people that are likely to lose their jobs? Well, the legalities will be handled through repeal, uh, and, uh, and I know the amendment bills, I've seen some of them already, like the, the amen, about eight amendment bills, mm. I, I think I, I should be presented to, to Parliament this week, like the rationalization government agencies on the education sector amendment bill, internal affairs, national resources and environment sector works, the, these bills are ready up to eight bills that per sector that are merging the agencies under a particular sector. In principle, the merger of agencies is good. And, uh, and the legalities would be handled by parliament, which is our lawmaking body. But when you look at the welfare of uh, staff, those who have chosen to join the mainstream public service, are they incorporated with their salaries and benefits? No. So, and at what rank are they absorbed? <laughs> These are the technical issues mm -hmm. uh, 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 that, that must be addressed. And those who have thought to retire, of course, we need a lot of money mm -hmm. to compensate them. In principle, like I have said, the rationalization is good. In my view, if we were to rationalize these agencies, we should choose, first of all, we have non-performing agencies, where people are just collecting salaries and going home. According to Auditor General's report, we have 10 trillion in, in areas. Yeah. Uh, as a government. Domestic area. I, domestic areas in mm. rent yeah. uh, and, and some of these utility bills. We owe 10 trillion. Meaning that there are agencies that, that rent princes, that cannot even afford rent, that are not paying their, their, their utility bills. I, there's a time National Water, I think, disconnected. Some agencies, including hospitals, creating a crisis. There, there is even no harmonization in terms of, of bills and costs in the government. That is also an issue that should be centralized. Say that if national water is supplying government entities, they should directly be paid through finance. Why do you send this money to entities where it is then diverted and we have areas to reach a crisis of disconnecting hospitals? Where water is a necessity, that also is a sign of mismanagement. So you have these challenges. Most of agencies, in addition to lacking the, the basics for the, for the non-wage bill and recurrent budget that should enable them to, to offer service, we are borrowing to, to pay salaries in these agencies. That is a crisis in terms of government. I know that Uganda Revenue Authority has registered shortfalls almost throughout yeah. this year. But also the same government talks of economic growth. Economic growth that does not reflect in revenue collection <laughs> is al almost for fide data. Because wh what growth? You, you know, we have economic growth that neither creates jobs and neither creates revenue and does not create happiness among us, the population. What kind of economic growth is that if it's not cooked figures? Thank you very much. Honourable, yes, yeah, as Honourable you come Samuji, to the minister, you see, Honourable Minister. There are also simple things that you need to ask government to answer. We have National Water and the Minister of Water. Both of them are supplying water. I, I am supplied by National Water where I stay in, Ch in Chira. Where I do farming in Mukono, I am supplied by the ministry. What's the difference? They, they both. Uh, I will give another example that will help to explain this. Because the Minister of Water is also, uh, they are also supplying separately. They even collect their own money. But the level of inefficiency, let me first give you other examples. You need to go and visit the roads done by Minister of Works and the roads done by ONRA. You will see a huge difference. If you asked me today to choose who will do my road between ONRA and Minister of Works, I will choose UNRWA and I will not choose a Minister of Works. 
electricity. Where I was born, there is electricity done by government and not transferred by lines that are not transferred to Umeme. The other day I went to my village, told me they had stolen wires. They went to Umeme, ah, that one is handled by the ministry. Four months later, the ministry hasn't visited their lines where wires are stolen. And you can compare your UBC here with the new vision, which is run by these fellows. That's why in parliament I had suggested they need to transfer it to new vision immediately. So this government has not exemplified. Why not new vision to UBC? But for you, we, we give you a budget every year because you're not making any money. You're not giving new vision any money. So if there is anything for you, I will close you immediately. If, if rationalization is really something the government is taking seriously, <laughs> we give you money in the budget with the Omara here. Yes. We don't give new vision money. Mm. So who should I close first? So these examples of water, electricity, and roads, mm. and information is what you should expect when you transfer. And, uh, and uh, please mark my word, I support rationalization, but wait for the crisis. Roads done by UNRWA are fantastic. Roads done by works are breaking. You can come to Chira. I have about four roads that recently done by works. They are potholes. They are hard here. I have told you what. I have told you electricity. I have given you an example of UBC and, and new vision. So I don't, and we are not going to create angels because you see the, the starting point is to look at the human resource. I said, for me, Anyone who cannot get a job in a private company, you have no place in my government. And that's how I was judging the Prime Minister and people thought I was being abusive. If you can't get a job, you are in the ICT sector, and MTN can't employ you, please, you can't be my minister for ICT. What will you be doing there? Very simple. You can't get, no private company can employ you, please don't knock at my door that you want to work for government, because you are competing for the same thing. But this government doesn't ask for qualification. Of late, we have even people, pre president pleading with the parliament to pass people with no qualifications. This cabinet you see here has people who don't even qualify to be necessary teachers. Now they are the ones who are taking parastatals to run them. Very good idea, but it's going to land in the wrong hands, and this country should be braced for a crisis as soon as that happens. Honorable Minister, even as we get into the last leg of this hour, the biggest question is, especially <coughs> taxpayers' money, getting value for money. A lot of things talked about corruption, exemptions, a lot of money there. Low-hanging fruit. Why aim for rationalization of agencies that are working and not this low-hanging fruit? I think we are going to sort out one thing at a go. <coughs> for instance, corruption, we are fighting corruption. There are so many several agencies which are in place and are fighting corruption. And the fight uh, of corruption will continue. And it needs a concerted effort. It will not be a minister or the president to fight what? Corruption. The president said I'm those, happy. those who stole my heart was, mm. was a subversion. I'm, 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 and the NRM code. I'm, I'm, I'm happy that parliament itself has exposed what? Corrupt people. And, and, and they are doing well as far as the fighting corruption is concerned. All those committees of parliament, they're exposing corrupt people. And uh, some of them, uh, uh, so, some of these agencies have used the reports of parliament to take the corrupt to court. And there are some who are battling cases in court right now. There are some who have been convicted. There are some because of lack of sufficient evidence. They, 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 they jump the bail. So me, I think that one should be a concerted effort by all of us, the fight against corruption. And it's not ministries only which are corrupt, even those agencies. <laughs> there is corruption even in what? In these agencies. So we are going to fight all those diseases. The, 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 the issue that there is dicentral, I think as the president has said, you cannot say if, if there is dicentral and cholera, you say let us first fight cholera and leave dicentral too. <laughs> to continue not at all we, you have to fight all those epidemics at a go now uh, rationalization is one of the of the of the things we should really 
put our, our, our efforts on. And I'm happy that all of us accept that rationalization is good. But I think we, 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 we don't consider on how should we <laughs> rationalize. But we have all accepted that rationalization is good. Now what, we, what, what we, we disagree on is the how. How do we rationalize? And, and, and that one is a very nice debate. For us as a cabinet, we think, let us start with agencies. Uh, we, we rationalize these agencies and see how we cure the problems in these agencies. What uh, my brother Semuju is saying now, you know, to come back to the ministries and there will be a lot of red tape and then ministers will write cheats. Even now I can write a cheat to UBC because I'm the one who appoints the MD of what? Of UBC. I appoint the chairman board and the board. I also appoint... But we, ha we have had the, I, I, we have had <laughs> the agencies <laughs> defying mm. ministers. If you remember Kajina and Biaba Gambi, mm. over the construction of the Chibuye uh, arm of the MPG Expressway, mm. Biaba Gambi saying, let's get people who are doing the Expressway, and she said, no, 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 we must go through advertising. Yes, and, and uh, that, then that's good. That means you have people who can defy authority. We can even have a PS who will defy a what? A minister. That is it. But what, what, I'm, what I'm trying to bring out, still I can instruct the, the MD of UBC because I'm the one who appoints him. So I think that one shouldn't be really a, a, a very big factor. I think what we need is if these agencies are streamlined, do we have honest people? to run the, 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 it's about the, the, the human resource. Exactly, it's about uh, human resource. But let us first rationalize and, and save that, save, 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 save that, that, that expenditure so that it can do uh, something else. And um, then we can look at now the human resource. Uh, are these ministries uh, led by capable people? No. That would be another, <laughs> another story. <laughs> but what I'm saying is, look, all these ministers, uh, 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 e e even us who are not elected, elected members of parliament, we are ex-officials, ex-official members of parliament. And to be a minister, you must qualify to be a member of what? Of parliament. So, so, so uh, when I was an, an MP who doubles as a minister, mm. You have four vehicles from a taxpayer. Mm. They, they money for a vehicle in parliament mm. and the three vehicles you are using to do. Uh, for instance, uh, I don't have, I don't have, I have only one vehicle f as, as a minister and the vehicle I got uh, uh, from parliament, uh, from money I was given by parliament, which all of us here. But for they, they gave you money as who? Eh? As a, an ex official member of parliament. Because me, parliament is supposed to drive me back to my constituents. Yes, I, I, I also <laughs> have a, I also have a constituents. So you, you, you have double transport? No, I have, a, I have a constituents. State <laughs> house. But this you have my a constituents. Constituents. <laughs> <laughs> and, and, uh, and for you, you drive to Chira, me, yeah, me I, I drive I, to Entebbe. You can discuss <laughs> the And I get mileage also <laughs> to drive me to what? To Entebbe. And I have a constituency I represent. Mm. Yeah. You can even be sacked uh, six months, but yeah. you will go with the parliamentary. MPs are not going to be sacked. Yeah. No, because they have a artistic contract of five. And I'm not saying, yes. uh, I'm not uh, justifying mm. giving mm. MPs money to buy a car. Mm. But an MP at least has a contract of five years. Yes. For you, your contract can mm. be even uh, one day. Yeah. But, you but, but why does parliament, parliament give it, you it can be, it can be one day. officials who are given but a vehicle in, in, in okay. parliament? Okay, uh, but, but Honorable <laughs> Minister, <laughs> yes. one of the biggest concerns <laughs> is the public outcry, <laughs> yes, especially yes. for efficiency mm. and effectiveness of service delivery. Yes. One is that people are going to lose jobs. Mm. Two, we, we see what Honorable Semuju has spoken about as a crisis. Mm. Do you see what he see, mm. even as we draw to one end? Oh, you know... Honorable Semuju, what, what he's talking about, obviously, Honorable Semuju has a lot of exaggerations. <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but obviously, when he talks about corruption in government, I see it. And, and we have been here with you, we have been here with the Honorable Mara, with, I concede on, on matters of what? Of corruption. And we all agree, even the President agrees, that corruption is eating up this, this country. 
And what we are trying to do is to see how, if we rationalize, first of all, we are going to save some money. But it, can we also <laughs> control corruption? Because there is also corruption in what? In agencies. How, how do we manage all that corruption, uh, even when we have rationalized? It is something we should all think about as Ugandans and try to, 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 to really fight hard to ensure there is efficiency in, uh, in government. And, and not necessarily in the ministries, but even the parliament itself, there must be efficiency. L lastly, Honorable Mara, <laughs> let me take a break. Yeah, yeah. You, you, you see, he's talking about corruption. Mm. The corruption in government is mainly through procurement. Yes. I'll give you a quick example. You'll mm. find um, a supplier mm. supplying pens to Ministry X, maybe giving a, a pen of 3,000. Then he will supply this MDA 1 or another Ministry 2 at five at, at seven thousand or ten thousand and these are these are the same person supplying yes. pens yes. to different entities prices are different mm. how can we even allow that to happen mm. okay in, in, our, in our government honorable mara let's take a break <laughs> so that we are <laughs> let's take a quick break and when we come back we'll be concluding this story and are also discussing how this rationalization can actually happen in this country but also look at the cost benefit analysis like here on behind the headlines <laughs> Even as we get to the last leg of air, the discussion keeps going and we keep discussing everything rationalization. My name is Timothy Nyangweso. I'm joined by Dr. Sarah Birete, Honorable Omar Paul, Honorable Ibrahim Nganda Semuju, and the Honorable Minister Godfrey Kavianga. We're discussing everything rationalization, especially if it can be effective and efficient to the public concerns. Let me read some of your feedback coming through. Uh, Opio Michael from Buyikwe Town. I do not support opposition, but I concur with Honorable Semuju. In the matter of government, should stop employing people with political affiliations, but people with the level of competences. Okay? Alan Shaka Orlando from Karamoja says, Reorganizing is very okay, but the challenge is that we have campaign posters of ministers, those who cannot, be, who cannot make any achievements or have any targets together, with some of them NRM who believe fast secure the cake, despite knowing the reality. The frontliners should have parliament, but unfortunately, we no longer have effective legislators legislating some of the critical issues. Instead, they're after creating war among individuals. Wilson from Muyenga, Honorable Semuju is spot on. Regards motivation of ministers on reorganization of MDAs, but for as long as the president directly is, is directly involved in the control of the budget processes, Nothing much should be expected from the reorganization of MDAs. Uh, Alex here says, now where do you go to put the manpower that will be affected? You create unemployment, okay? Julius Othieno from Toro, the reorganization of MDAs will not meet its target of reducing government expenditure because this is more of a political matter. The president will still have all the same people employed in other entities and the wage bill will still remain high because 2026 is likely to be a tougher year for NRM than any other that President Museveni has had <coughs> in the civil service. Ofumbe Joel, reorganizing is good, is a good thing, but most of the things, most of the people are just working for their bellies, so no future period. Fred Itungo, lastly but not least, as, ra as we rationalize, we need to end the situation where government pretends to pay its civil servants for work they do. Nash Wash Raphael. I do believe in what Honorable Semuju is saying, which takes us on the ground. How are we going to achieve all these plans when the people handling them cannot be trusted? Go to the road. Chisasi is the worst in Bududa. To me, I think we have a very big job to do as far as Uganda is concerned. Keep your messages coming through. We'll be discussing them here, even as we go on. Dr. Sarah, let me come to you. Uh, where is the involvement of citizens in this discussion? Because it was the NRM caucus. It is now uh, approved by cabinet, coming to the floor of parliament. Where is the citizen in this equation? Because at the end of the day, he's not paying taxes. Well, citizens are ideal in a democracy should be represented already in two ways. One is through their members of parliament, 
assuming that the MPs were elected in free and fair elections and are true representatives of the people and they amplify mm. the voice of the people. The second way is through illegal making process where each bill should go through 45 days of, of public participation. I know that this parliament passes laws in a rush. Some of the laws being challenged before court were passed in a total of six days. When the, the, the regulations of parliament provide for 45 days so that there is enough participation of the people. So a citizen of Uganda ideally is engaged in those ways, mm. assuming that these bills on rationalization will be given the mandated 45 days so that we don't run into court battles. Because I can assure you that the citizens who are about to lose jobs, they will take government on if any mistakes are created. I don't see why parliament should be in a rush to pass an error, whether it is anti-homosexuality, an error of any form should go through the prescribed days and, uh, and, and frameworks uh, as, as, uh, as, uh, as, uh, as contained in the regulations of parliament. So that's how a citizen is involved. Would there a be citizen is yes. also involved here. I'm, I'm, I'm here real as on this show as a month once. So I'm, 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 <laughs> <laughs> <We're debating. laughs> I'm involved in the debate. And, 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 and the voice views. of the voiceless. No, no. <laughs> 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 These ones, they, when they want to deceive people, they say we are the voice of the voiceless. <laughs> we, are, we are not deceiving people. We are part of the citizenry and citizens' agents. <laughs> so, but our citizens' agents is disfranchised in several ways. I did talk about the, the, the poverty and, and, and the struggles of the people. So when you are talking of the people, for example, you have, if there is one employed person, and then MPs understand this burden better, because some of these MPs take care of so many homes in mm. different forms, mm. school fees, medical bills, and, and other requirements through their constituencies that call them all the time. So when you have citizens and they have one person in the government and that one person is about to lose a job, when this is the only government, because of lack of service delivery, efficient service delivery, you have individuals acting as deliverers of service to the, to the particular people. So at times you, would, you might get a contradiction if you took this matter to the people. So long as they are affected and said I knew one person in the government, now, if this government is removed, I will not know anyone. They might say, no, leave our person. That's how we have gone to the bloated part of the excuse of NRM is that districts are demanded by the people. Mm. Yes, people might demand the districts because it's the only way they know that, that can deliver service because other forms have collapsed. But what is lacking is leadership. Leadership that would tell the people that what they need is a hospital, not a district. What they need is a road, not a district. What they need is a school. We have schools who are really in shambolic structures and in bad shape. And the government does not have money to facilitate education as a public good. Instead, we are wasting it on these bloated structures where parliament eats six seed schools every day. These are schools if you... Because we are saying we need a seed school per sub county, Parliament, in two days, would provide enough seed schools in a district. If you say the Parliament first go home, because of the money they spend, that they are bloated in nature. I'm not saying Parliament is useless, but we can do the functions of Parliament with a linear, efficient structure, not the bloated structure of about. 558 MPs. We don't need them. Is there a place for consultation, especially for citizens to have their input in this rationalization of agencies, especially looking at, at the end of it, they're receiving a service? Let the legal and parliamentary affairs committee of parliament go and conduct consultations in the districts or regions. This is part of how parliament is supposed to function. But because the leadership has its own agenda, sometimes they bulldoze these processes. Parliament is not supposed to be confined 
in this building. It is supposed to be part of the people. Parliament belongs to the people. Part of these consultations should go and sit in selected districts and get people's views. But they are confined here in buildings. And, 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 and sometimes people are not even given space to can, share their can, views. Can I provide some information to Dr. Sarah? Uh, Timothy, we agreed that these bills will be, will be brought to uh, Parliament in clusters. Uh, for example, under Minister of Finance, you might have entities that are supervised by the Minister of <coughs> Finance. Those bills will come through Parliament and it will be handed over to the Committee of Finance. Now, the Committee of Finance will process that bill. And during the process, the invitations will be made to the, to the public to come and air their views. Um, uh, either you write a memorandum or a petition as an individual or a group of people, they will come before various committees. Also, Pro yeah. Parliament, ca the committee can go and consult yes, people. Yes, the, the committee can That's go. That's what I'm talking about. The committee can go. The committee can invite the public to come. Yes. If they cannot go. If, you know, we are talking about money. I don't know many sectoral committees that will handle all those uh, various bills, but uh, they might actually invite people to come where they can travel outside. They should be able to consult broadly before we come back and process the bill. Yes, but there are also challenges of how parliament functions, and the MPs should, be, should take it up. Mm. For example, I saw a withdrawal of parliamentary vehicles from a leader of opposition and his team in the field, and they had to jump in taxis. So what kind of parliament are you people serving in? Doctor, before I get to <laughs> Honorable Mara, <laughs> uh, any, 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 any we, countries we, we, that... Me and Sebuja, we are on a hot seat today. <laughs> <laughs> that, that was wrong. Because you see, you can't get the, yeah, you the lead of opposition the leadership of parliament. with ministers inspecting roads and then you withdraw a vehicle. And the reason that was given by the clerk was ridiculous that I saw there at Okwago. But Rukwago is in charge of Kampala, so there is no way you're going to inspect roads in Kampala in order to have the road mayor. Very true. Dr. Asara, uh, before I get to Honorable Mara, is there any country, both in Africa and across the world, <coughs> that has really done rationalization well that we can benchmark from? That we can I'm, draw I'm lessons I'm from? I'm sure there are several, because the, the trend has been, you know, whereas the structural adjustment program came in with a smaller government agenda. Mm. Uh, and for us, of course, as usual, we got it wrong, whereby we gave away, or people took advantage to steal government parastatals then. But many of these governments have done better. For example, you can benchmark from, from Tanzania. You don't need to go far. How did Tanzania handle those reforms for structure adjustment without selling or stealing from the Wanainchi? Then you can also go to functional governments like Namibia uh, and other where you, you know democratic entities in Africa. How are they running? They don't have bloated structures like we do, but they have efficient structures that deliver service to their people in a timely and efficient manner. And that's the role of executive. Honorable Mara, what would be the benefit if rationalization was a success? What would be the benefit and how would it look like? Um, first, um, currently the government of Uganda is, uh, is in serious need of money to meet our uh, budget, uh, uh, you know, volumes. Uh, we so, are bankrupt. So, so <laughs> 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 we are not bankrupt. <laughs> we, we, we continue to collect, by the way, additional revenues, but the, the demand from the population is very high. No. So whatever revenue so Mara, that we the Bank of Uganda can, can I, can last I, year can, in uh, their um, April report yeah. said for the first time we are unable to repay our external debt. And that's how the international lenders encroached on our reserves, reducing them from four months to about three point two. We are also unable to pay all the interest. Governments don't collapse because they don't have money. You remember the complaint in Parliament, the releases that had been made were releases just for salaries for some departments. You come and hang your jacket 
and go home because there is no money to facilitate you to do anything apart from your salary. For me, actually, I think we are bankrupt. I, I think that, 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 that comment is not correct. Uh, Uganda has never defaulted on our external <coughs> debt. We have been hmm? restructuring. Uganda has not never ex uh, defaulted on our external debt. Why are you, let, why let, are you let, capitalizing let, no, Bank no, of Uganda? No, let, me let me explain to you. Uh, I, I have some knowledge in the area of finance, so if you could hear me out. The, the, the Bank of Uganda is mandated, uh, among other things, to handle, to make payments of external debt on behalf of the government of Uganda. Mm -hmm. So from on a daily basis or a monthly basis, Bank of Uganda using various uh, monetary instruments would build our reserves. And the reserves are there mainly for a number of things. Um, if we are attacked by a foreign country, we can use our reserves. We can use our reserves to manage monetary policy. Uh, that is exchange rate and so forth. Third, disasters. If there is a huge disaster, we can, we can go and take that money. And most importantly, managing government imports, including uh, external debt. It's a mandate of Bank of Uganda. But I want to come to the point which if, you... If I may ask you on the point you're saying, yeah, Honorable, yeah. is it true that mm. since 2019, our reserves have been shrinking? It's from, from six so, point so, nine so, so reserves shrinking is another debate. It doesn't mean we are bankrupt. What happens is that if uh, the external debt matures, Bank of Uganda is mandated to pay that debt, even using our reserves. If government has not had enough tax collection, they will uh, take a okay, default. We are okay. They will def no, they will take a default no, on, no, the, on, on our reserves. Okay. So the reserves will come down. Have to labor. We are okay. But we are, but we are paid. Then mm. we begin to build that later road. So I think I don't think we should use the word bankrupt. So no. what word should we use? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I want to learn because he said he's a financial expert and agree. So can he tell me which word we should use? If you can't pay interest for, for <laughs> on the money you borrowed from but the that's commercial bank, but that's what I'm saying. Do. We have never defaulted. Limited. You, you, go, you, go to, you go to Zambia. <laughs> we should say you, you go to Zambia. No, no, no. I, I want only one thing from you. Which yeah. word do I use? Now, you can use bankrupt on Zambia, where you are no, completely... No, no, Uganda. No, no, no. Which word do I use? You see, the World Bank, IMF, refused, stopped, actually refused to give more money to, to, to Zambia on account that they are defaulted on their the, the, the foreign debts. Now, for us, we have never defaulted. The only punishment which we are being given is homosexuality law. But we are paying our debts. There is no country or multinational agency or IMF or World Bank that is complaining. But we have been restructuring the debts. Honorable, let's come back. But that is that is a fact. Let's stick with the facts. We can do politics, but no, no, I, I, am, I am here also to learn. Tell me which word do I use? If Bank of Uganda in a report says we are unable to pay interest, we are unable to pay foreign debt, and as a result, we encroached on our reserves. Which word do I use? I, I, I think the person who would have used that word also would have uh, misapplied terms. Because if you say we are un unable to pay our national debt, the reserves is our money. It's not anybody's money. It's our yeah, money. Yeah, but you see, in a home, if yes. you begin selling a mattress and a bed, yes. you can't say you are doing very well. Because the, the mattress and the bed is yours. But if you are a husband, you turn up and tell your wife, let me carry the bed and the mattress to pay the debt. Honorable, honorable, if you have... Um, a, a, that's what we are doing. No, if you have, let me say, 500 million on your account with the bank, For but, but, but you have been paying school fees using your salary, and this particular, on this particular occasion, your salary is committed <coughs> to other things, and you go and pick uh, part of the 500 million to go and pay fees, would you call yourself bankrupt? Yes. No, 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 no. Okay. But, but, but let me answer yes. your question. <laughs> Benefits of this rationalization. Yes. Especially Can on you give me the word delivery. I could use? I don't want to sound ignorant again when I have a financial expert. Tell me which word do I use? Uh, can we proceed? Please <laughs> proceed. <laughs> Yes. What would be the benefits of this rationalization if it's successful, especially to service delivery? 
yeah, so, so number one is that we are going to uh, rescue one trillion shillings, which we so desperately need, given the fact that the budget support from uh, our friends abroad is no longer forthcoming. So we need to cut our jacket according to our size. So if we save the one trillion shillings, it will help us to fund part of our budget, which ordinarily, if we didn't do that, we would be in a, in a, in a big problem. The second thing is that we will have a much smaller government going forward. And that but, uh, if- Sorry, I, I, I didn't want to disrupt the <laughs> I, I stay quietly and listen to you. In a position uh, of knowledge, yes. yes. Let him not have a Kanye functionary who is part of Mr. Museveni's budget committee. <laughs> That's where, by the way, he sits. We, if you read the reports of the Auditor General, yes, we have given Pinetti, this uh, friend of the president, introduced by Gaddafi, four hundred and seventy-six billion for a hospital. In the agreement that we signed with her, <coughs> the executing agents were supposed to be Minister of Health. She chased the ministers, chased the MPs. Now the, the, the agreement has been transferred to Prime Minister's office. The Auditor General says actually she has been, at the moment she has been overpaid by over 70 million US dollars. The government engineer was supposed to provide his work is not there. So we are paying for almost no work. But most interesting in the report of the Auditor General, when we borrowed the money from World Bank for COVID, we, because at that time our argument was, since we are receiving free vaccines, we don't have to procure. Mm. They went ahead and procured. The Auditor General says doses, five million doses have expired at NMS in Entebbe. There are various doses around the country that are supposed to be corrected. Worth 300 billion shillings. The sad thing is that uh, the Auditor General says the minister has told him we are waiting for money for Gavi that we are going to be given, which we shall use to go and destroy the vaccines. Can you imagine? So we have vaccines expiring worth 300 billion shilling. We don't have money to destroy the vaccines. We are waiting for the money donated to Uganda and Gavi to go and destroy. Mm. So even if you get the money and you give it to NRM, the moment they continue wasting it, you will not realize any benefit. And, and he is in a position of knowledge. Let him not uh, argue like a part of Mr. Museveni's budget committee group. So, uh, I've listened to him. But the point I wanted to make is, because you see, Honorable Chemuz, I, I have personally said that the rationalization of government must move hand in hand with efficiency and, and effectiveness in the ministries themselves, in the public administration itself, for it to work. And which means we still have a lot of work, a lot of job to do, especially in dealing with the personnel that runs our ministries. So that then requires seriousness in terms of leadership that we have in those ministries. And I would want to agree with you that we need to appoint people who are very competent who can manage these things, who can implement those programs of government, and making sure that the end results, actually, the expectation to the citizens, it is realized. But what I think he had asked is that, what are the possible benefits that will accrue as a result of the rationalization? And I think that is the point I wanted to make. I did not disabuse myself of the fact that there is an efficiency in government. That is there. The issue of um, uh, corruption and mismanagement of public money is a totally big subject that, that we can address. And uh, sometimes it's very disappointing because I'm also told, uh, the lady from the last time we went, I think sometime uh, two years ago as a committee of finance, we went there but she didn't block us. But I'm told she had blocked the Minister of Health herself. She had blocked a committee of parliament from accessing the, uh, the place. That's the hospital. So, so, but that is completely <laughs> unacceptable. So, that is a, a big, a big that's debate the, that we can have. Exist. Come again. Does the hospital exist? 
I have never visited it, I think, more than two years ago. I don't know what is there now. <laughs> but if, 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 if we have spent over 400 billion already. 476. 476 billion. And remember, in the supplementary, we gave the Ministry of uh, Health 2 billion shillings. To go and inspect, but to, she has to, been stopped she, from accessing. So she will be used, I mean, she will use the money. There is what they call the uh, honors engineer. Our, our own engineer that should be going to the site was and, chest. And, and be doing that. When was it? It's chest. We have Read just the report of Ontario. That, that we are was, now using a penalty, penalty in here to tell us this work is finished, pay and we pay. That was a long time ago. We passed this supplementary report recently. This is December, 20, two months ago. So, so that, is, that is really um, unacceptable. I mean, that, that we can as parliament discuss it and we uh, relevant committees can still go and see it. They were your chest, the relevant <laughs> committee. <laughs> but the, so, so the, the, the <laughs> point is, <laughs> let, let me answer the question because I, I, need, to, I need to listen to the moderator more <laughs> so, that, <laughs> so that we can have this debate. Honorable <laughs> Mara, <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> I'm giving some concerns that yeah. are actually raised. The committee yeah. went anyway. Especially when you hear what Dr. Sarah is saying and what Honorable Semuju is saying. Yes. Come tomorrow. Yes the Honorable Minister of Education is going to announce S4 results. Yes. And those are 700 children that are going to come out of there. If Parliament is eating six seed schools... Every day. <laughs> and uh, the executive <laughs> is about five. The presidents... And looking at S1, yeah. what went through with the drama and the circus there, can rationalization guarantee service delivery? The effectiveness and efficiency we're talking about. You see, as the president said, this is a, a very important strategic decision that must be made at this particular time. So one trillion shillings is a substantial amount of money. If we can get that money, we can deploy that money in health. We can deploy that money in education. And you're talking about seed schools. When we don't have enough capitation grant to our public schools to build the seed schools you're talking about to build the necessary infrastructure mm -hmm. to put in place the laboratories. If we don't have money for it, how can we achieve that? So let us um, take this initiative that the president is leading. And my, my, my belief is that because of the presentation he did, by the way, he did a very uh, uh, you know, beautiful presentation. It was very simple in, in his presentation. I think everybody understood. So the question is, I think, let us, as we say in Parliament, let us not uh, ant debate in anticipation or legislate in anticipation. Let's allow the process of rationalization no, to can, be completed. can debate with experience. <laughs> oh. <laughs> so no. that we, we are allowed this money to be available because that is the first step, that's the first disease that must be dealt. We know that we have one trillion shillings aside and we can then begin to uh, make provisions, budget provisions in some of the key areas that our children need. The second one, of course, is the inefficiency which is in government itself. And they must go in tandem. It should not go, it should not be done exclusive of the other. Okay. Let, let us deal with an inefficiency in government and the ministers are here. No, these are very important people. Sometimes I wonder how a minister who is appointed to oversee a particular docket can fail it when we are doing a master's program that we used to have what we call business process re-engineering, re where you look at the bottlenecks and you fix it. So we need to re-engineer processes, inefficiency, bureaucracy in government, remove those clogs so that water can flow and the service delivery can come so that when government is rationalized, and, uh, and permit me just one minute, you had asked a question I said, now where are these people going to be? This is what it means. These people are going to come the process, first of all, will give them the severance pay. You take your money and go. Those who can be uh, mainstream into government, you will be interviewed for the position. If you're one time um, a crop scientist somewhere, and we, we are saying now the services must be where the people are. For example, agriculturists. I give you an example if you are in NADS. We now need agricultural services at the district. So those vacancies will be available at the government scale. So we give you a severance pay. Now you apply to go and service, uh, to go and serve in the district of Otuke by providing agricultural services to our farmers okay. who are doing commercial agriculture. But so, which means, uh, Timothy, other people will have to go forever and they will have to create their own jobs. Those who can accept the government scale then comes and work within the government. So this 20 million gets 2.7 million. 
Now, those of 20 million, if you are a big person, now we give you 2.7, if you think it's nothing, then go, and, uh, go into the private sector and create wealth. Honorable Semuju, you spoke about a crisis you're foreseeing with this rationalization. You agree with it, but you foresee a crisis. Yeah. What crisis do you see, and how can it be averted? <clears throat> Let me uh, use the same example as I answer the question. I have told you to compare what is done by UNRWA and Minister of Works. And Minister of Works. Mm. Compare uh, water supplied by Minister of Water and, and National Water. Mm. Compare um, electricity supplied by these parastatos, UDCL, and the one directly supplied by the Ministry. I give you your own example, UBC here and New Vision. Because every year now we have to put money to continue running uh, uh, UBC. Because these ministers don't give it freedom to, to, to run on its own. So there are examples. But I am also with experience, I don't want to debate uh, in anticipation as Omar has advised, but I also want to debate with experience. When Mr. M7 wants to achieve something, first of all, he's a very good speaker. Every day he was attacking uh, NADS when he wanted Salim Sare to go there with the operation with the creation. NADS, 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 NADS. He made it look like a uh, Saturn. Then everybody said Sare went there, they trained the soldiers 600 in Makerere. The first thing they did for every soldier to buy himself a pickup, 90 billion shilling. Now later the same president says now it is in Yoga. Because these operation with the creation have not worked, now it is a PDM. The same president is lucky that you, especially among his believers, the Omaras, they will believe in him today. He, he is right even when he is wrong. And he is also right. So that's how he operates. The ministries, as you have them today, as I, and, and I don't want to lose the point, I said, a rationalization is a very good thing if it was being done in a good faith and if it was being done for a purpose. Uh, and that rationalization <coughs> should have been announced as a package. You do constitutional reforms, you reduce parliament. The sixth parliament was 282 MPs, I think. They have now grown by more than 50%. We are now 557. Yeah. Oh. And they will continue growing. We are now by the way constructing. You see, people may not cost these, the, 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 these expansions. We are now spending about 180 billion to construct a new chamber because you can't fit in the other one. That's what uh, Dr. Sarah was talking about. Instead of constructing schools, we are constructing chambers to accommodate the growing number of MPs. And you, you continue saying we want to save money, we can't pay our debt. I have been looking at the Middle East countries, the, the Middle East these days, Saudi Arabia, Dubai, and so on and so forth. They run their countries as a project. Uh, there's been a struggle now between Dubai and Saudi Arabia. Saudi Arabia now wants to be the, the regional center for trade, for transport. They are starting new airlines. They are attracting. They have even put incentives mm. for every company that uses Saudi Arabia as their regional headquarter. Yes. That's what Kenya does. And even Abu Dhabi. Yes. So they are competing in uh, marketing their countries right. as a project. But Uganda here, I don't know we are, whether we are in which century. You, yesterday I was complaining in, in the parliament. All the ministers um, above the age of 70, I mean, f uh, 67 mm. are not coming to parliament. From Motafire to Jim Mwezi to Kasaija to Janet Kataha to everybody, those old ones. Because they are in retirement. You can't find an old person in Rwanda holding a cabinet ministry. You cannot, because in Rwanda they are targets. You don't meet them, you are fired. In Uganda, the targets are in terms of following. If you can afford the president 10,000 voters, you can turn the ministry into a retirement nest for you. Kasaija now no longer comes to parliament, he sends a uh, Musasizi. Otafide doesn't show up, he sends a uh, David Moz. Kataha doesn't show up, he sends Muyingo and Kaduchu and somebody else. It's called Honorable James <coughs> Museveni. 
so why didn't you say otafiri jeno so i mean when i so when it comes to kata you remind me that i should call her so i am i am by my training i call people by their names not title <coughs> so it, that group just imagine if you're a private company with hedges to deliver and one of your directors is otafiri another one is kasaija i was told by people who go uh, to negotiate loans and, and, and financing of projects in Uganda, that you carry Kasaija and his age mate who are going to sleep in a meeting. Chinese bring very young people on laptops, and for you, you present a Kasaija there who sleeps, and you think you are running a country. And they say, that's why you have problems with many of the loans that you contract. As a result, if you eat the Auditor General, we have 14 trillion shilling we have borrowed not utilized yeah. because the projects yeah. are not ready yeah. yeah projects are not ready no design no counter funding but we have these days even developed a bad habit of cancelling some loans and we are paying um, penalties, penalties for cancelling them but for god's sake if you are sending judges to go and negotiate or, 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 because look one time gentleman told us if, if you're going to look at the performance curve of midterm seven and his government the first years when Museveni was very productive, uh, the first five to ten years, the government was moving. Now he himself is tired. His cabinet is tired. They are a group that has no direction. Even his son keeps saying it, that they, these fellows are tired. They need to go away. They are not thinking anymore. So even if you get all the, the parastatos and you load them on your shoulders, you are actually making the situation worse. I have told you, they can't <laughs> run the departments that they have. Now you're overloading them. Not that, uh, and, and please, I want to keep saying this, I support rationalization 100%, but I don't trust that uh, these pair of hands called the NRM will make any difference. In fact, would, would you be happy if uh, President Museveni were to fire the old and bring in young viable people? You need to start with him himself. <laughs> so they, they all go as a group. He's, you he's, get elected. People. he's an elected leader. You get people. Mm who are competent, who are energetic, and give them contracts. And then assess them by year. But uh, I'm not sure that this cabinet, let him tell us what, was it, what, what were his targets when they were appointing him. So if we have no target, really it's like you are home, in your home until you die and you are buried. It means you are home. You are under no Honorable, Honorable Samuju, yes. you have given us the crisis. How do we avert the crisis of rationalization? <laughs> I have said the, the, the starting point, I told you, for, for me, the formula. When I went to work at Monitor, they told me every month you must deliver 40, 24 quality stories. If you don't deliver them, you move between the salary scales. Mm. If they are paying you this much, you go down until you have delivered. Because they are a company that survives on results. These ministers, if I was the one supervising them, each one of <coughs> them will have, um, will have performance, uh, targets. You don't perform, you leave. But cabinet reshuffle, so, so the cabinet becomes like a campaign committee. So if there is a campaign coming, then you change to bring those who will go and sing at Rari. That, that's how it is done, really. So for me, I think you can only avert the crisis today if you have retired people who should be retired and gotten people who are still energetic and competent and then you give them uh, because you see, <coughs> even people within the same institution, uh, I saw it even at Monta, I used Monta where I worked first. I was new, I didn't have any relative there. But the year was the best, they announced to me that you have been the best journalist this year. Can we begin uh, get, getting to know who has been the best minister this year and <laughs> what that minister has done? And then who has been worst, and then those ones are shown in the door. But the reshuffle, so there is no basis to reshuffle people. It's just something else. Because they are, uh, as a group, they don't even have the urge and the motivation to deliver anything as long as the museum is happy. And that's why decision making is very difficult because they, they are seeking only to appease one person. As long as he's happy and he's also old, these days he's not as mobile as he used to be. So I, I, I don't see success, not because what they, 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 they undertake to do is bad, but it's going to be the same problem. I've told you, Nads, uh, uh, what happened with the privatization. Privatization, by the way, wasn't a bad per se. But you will have eloquent speeches of what they intend to do. That time, you needed to listen to Museveni. I was saying the government is not supposed to do business. 
and he was giving examples of, of, of the amount of money we are using to keep these companies. So if you were a believer, you would crap and say, oh, now he has made it. He has now started with the with, with same speeches again of rationalization. You wait for the scandals. When uh, the engineer, the one who was in charge of works, what did he, did he do with Katosi? Now they are going to be the ones who are doing uh, um, procurement. We quarreled with Mr. M7 when you are making oil bills because his argument was that the ministers must, uh, must be the one to make contracts on behalf of government. As Prime Minister, you are saying, no, 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 no. It must be taken for people in the Uganda oil company. And I don't want to repeat what happened eventually when Nevanda died. But he said it must be his ministers. Maybe because you see, and you need to understand how ministers work. I know one attorney general, former. Seven went and committed something. They, where are you? I am sir, here, here. Okay, you pick a patrol and come running. The attorney general who was supposed to advise the president went and signed a, a legal document without reading. And this is a fact. So this is how ministers work. Maybe he writes it that way. So very good thing, but it, unfortunately it is too late. It cannot be done under, uh, and by these uh, old fellows who, who are in retirement. Oh, Honorable Minister, yes. a, a lot has been said here. <laughs> Have you retired? But I'm <laughs> oh, you're tired. But the, 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 the good news is that everyone is in agreement that rationalization is good. Mm. But the question on efficiency of the ministers, the competence of the ministers there, because all these agencies are coming back to their ministries. Either they're transferred, either they're going to be merged. How do we deal with that so that as Dr. Sarah said, Omuntu Wawansi does not suffer the consequences. You know, one thing I'd like to assure the viewers and my colleagues here is that we have competent ministers. We have competent ministers because they are the ones running this country. And, and, and we have a competent government. That's why Honorable Semuju can be able to discuss all these matters on the national broadcaster. Because so, so that is it's an running. example of a Oh yes, it's running and we are providing services. Otherwise, it would have collapsed. So if the competence of a company is going to be judged if, by what I saw on TV. Uh, no, no, no. If, if we didn't have a competent ministry, this uh, UBC would have what? Collapse. You have always been incompetent. Idi Amin left the machine is here. His target was to make UBC hard in Zimbabwe. Mm. Then they wrote here. But, under, but, in this government. Uh, Boxes um, here brought by Idi Amin to make UBC. Uh, 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 <laughs> where are they? Where, where is the rot? I, when I, you are the minister here, I, then she steal the masks for UBC. I, I did I did meet the rot and was there. But what I want what I want to what I want to say is we have a competent government. We have competent ministers, minist we have targets because we always present our ministerial policy statements. They are debated by parliament where Semuju is and they are passed by parliament. So if there is any incompetence, then even parliament is what? Is incompetent. Because we are running this government as a team, there are three arms of government the legislature, the judiciary, and the executive. And, and we are all working, complementing one another. So you cannot blame that the government is, is incompetent when some of the, what we are implementing come, is passed by parliament. So me, I think so you will blame what parliament. we need. You mm. blame parliament for allowing you to construct a, a hospital <coughs> in Uruguay. Mm. But so you want to blame us. And, and, and uh, your committee is supervising. And so it was just. And, and, and then why do you give more money? We are not the ones giving. His who, government. Who, who is oh, passing no, 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 that money? <laughs> who is appropriating <laughs> the money? Who is appropriating the money? Do we have but the option? What, what, what I want to say is mm. we should run government as a team. Yeah. That is the most important thing. And for this rationalization to succeed, we must all impress it as a team. It's good we have all accepted that is the right thing to do, but probably the how. And 
these all these inaccuracies. Because when you talk about Minister of Works, uh, 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 you know, are doing better roads than Minister yeah, of Works. For instance, Minister of Works, in most cases, when they come to tarmacking, they are doing what we call low cost sealing. And UNRWA is doing heavy duty tarmacking. So you cannot compare the two. And for those low cost sealing, is for places where you will not have heavy what? Trucks. But you meet that in some cases, heavy trucks have started using now. They roads, have done a road meant, in Ichira, which each, are not each kilometer for, for, at for 2.5 to 3 billion. And they are breaking in one year. I cannot uh, verify. Uh, the no, I can tell you. Do you but want what the I know is, if the if it is low cost ceiling, it is far far cheaper than heavy heavy duty tamaking. So sometimes we shouldn't make those blames. I am without the examples I'm the giving you. I leave them specifications. Mm. And and but me, what I what I would like to say is, whatever incompetence you may see in. Uh, uh, ministries, it is, it can also be reflected in agencies or even in what in the parliament. Mm -hmm. But what what we are trying to do, what we want, to, what we should do after rationalization, just as the Honourable Mara say, mm -hmm. we need some a bit of capacity building mm -hmm. among the human resource. By the way, we even need capacity building among members of what of parliament. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. necessarily. We need members to reduce of parliament, them. They don't need the members, capacity uh, building. We just have to reduce and, them. And 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 and, and, and the civil servants mm -hmm. all need capacity building. And just as you are saying, rationalization is not going to end probably with government agencies. Mm. It should even go to parliament. It should yes. even go to cabinet. Yes. It should even go to all these political what appointments. Yes. So that we uh, what you called holistic rationalization. But it should actually start piecemeal, uh, uh, piece by piece, till we overhaul the whole system. Yeah. And, and me, I, I support that completely and also. What Sarah said, I, I don't know whether it is Sarah or Bomara, yeah. that why don't we have two MPs <laughs> per district, a woman a and a what? A man. And a man. And, and uh, because they will serve, <laughs> they, they can serve, if a woman can serve one district, a man can also serve one, one district. district. Yes. Those are things now, uh, this rationalization should generate debate that after we have rationalized agencies, what else should we, we rationalize? Okay. And then we go for it. That's the, that's the, that I support it 100% so that we really save uh, 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 overhead on overhead costs. We create efficiency, we, 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 we create effectiveness, and, uh, and we reduce duplication. Okay. Yeah. Let, let me read uh, these comments that have come through. Uh, Sam from Otuke District says, my view is to reorganize the MDAs alone. Sorry. My view is reorganizing MDAs alone is not a solution to eradicate poverty. Or rather, still hiding a point to the government. Let the government focuses on identifying those that know, but also its hidden places where consumption is too much in the money sector. Mifule Ronald, rationalization of MDS will play a great deal in avoiding duplication of duties and ensuring physical discipline. However, we need to think of merging the many districts that we have, but most importantly, we need to fight corruption. We lose more money to corruption than anything else, okay? Emma from Bali, I think national, nationalization will be helpful somewhere and somehow, but jobs should not be jobs should be given on merit. Patrick from Majumani. Uh, lastly, I totally agree with Dr. Sarah, Honorable Semuju, and Honorable Paul. Since 2026 is around the corner, this government is planning to give municipality statuses to other districts, which does not make anything of any standard there.